you started to refer to, of course, uh, the capabilities that a country needs to develop. I think the other piece you do in your book very nicely is set up a framework uh, for countries to think about how to effectively build up capacity. Um, talk to us about that. I know you have a yeah. nice little acronym for it as well. I call it the PATIO framework. And PATIO stands for People, Exploits, Tools, Infrastructure and Organization. And yeah. the reason why I came up with this abbreviation as hard as it is to pronounce was because I felt that you know, cyber capabilities are often misunderstood. Some people talk about, you know, the launching of cyber weapons or the use of cyber capabilities and the development of a cyber capacity. And as they were talking about it, I sometimes felt it didn't have quite the sense of what is relevant here and what is maybe less relevant. Yeah. And when I talk about this PTO, it's the P above all, the people that really stand out. Um, as I mentioned, you know, it goes about the recruitment, retention and training of people, and that's both technical folks, whether this is your developers and operators, but also your non-technical folks, your analysts, your lawyers, and so on. And that's that's an important one to, to consider uh, because then the questions, you know, mo most primarily when it comes to capability buildup is, you know, what type of programs can we establish for make to make sure that these people stay there? Uh, to what degree can we rely on reserve forces? To what degree do we need to collaborate with intel agencies to be effective? All of those questions. And if you would really push me hard on what will be the next sort of element there that is most relevant, it would be the unsexy infrastructure. Uh, where, you know, you really have to rely on a wide set of infrastructure where a lot of costs go to um, to make sure you're effective. You can think about target databases, but also what you use in specific operations, what we call C2 infrastructure, command and control infrastructure, where I personally would put less emphasis on, but the thing that has been discussed the most is the E, which is, stands for exploits. And these are split up typically in, in different categories the most prominent category is what we call zero-day exploits. Those exploits that are not yet known to the vendor or public. It's a sort of like key that has not yet been used by anyone that allows you to unlock a door or oftentimes a specific set of doors from the same, you know, in this case, software vendor. Now, that is sort of the focus that we hear about, the trade in these zero days, the use of them by actors that su suggest their sophistication. It's an interesting element, but it's really a tiny parcel of this bigger picture. And, you know, it's a small thing, not least, because once we start to understand how operations are conducted, we see that they are often not used. Um, Rob Joyce um, from uh, the NSA, when he was still leading, I believe, the Taylor Access Operation Unit, so the sort of the key unit um, that was responsible for cyber operations within the NSA, once gave a terrific talk at Enigma. And he said, um, you know, to be successful when it comes to cyber operations, it's primarily about knowing the adversary network better than they do themselves. Yeah. And if you know that really well, you often don't need something super fancy or exotic to get in. It's, you know, you can find other methods to come in. Um, and it's the same way as, let's say, you would want to get access to a massive building. Let it be, you know, the university building that I'm in right now. If you know it really well, you don't need the most unique, cunning way that no one has ever done to get in. You probably, once you know everyone's routine, you know that there is this door or this window that someone always leaves open. And that's the same with cyber operations, um, where most of the time this can be done, particularly for the military. Because as operations more frequently get discovered by nature, you know, disruptive and destructive, they don't want to maybe use something super exotic at the start. It is very costly in case discovery happens.